area was all wetlands, um, bottomland hardwood forests, cypress swamps, um, and, and it was converted to farmland in the 80s. Welcome to North River Farms, a 6,000 acre tract of land where wheat, corn, and other crops were grown over the last three decades, which is great for feeding people. But the wetlands here were destroyed in the process. At the time, hardly anyone thought that was a big deal because wetlands are really just swamps, and swamps aren't good for anything, right? North Carolina's most famous one is called the Great Dismal Swamp. And people have this idea of swamp in their head that, that it's going to be really nasty, there's going to be snakes, blah, blah, blah. Well, it turns out swamps are not only good, they're nature's water treatment plants, soaking up pollutants and farm chemicals and returning cleaner water to the estuary. How have you seen water quality change since you've started working on this project? These students are getting a first-hand look at how wetlands work. Farm fertilizer contains nitrogen and phosphorus. When those chemicals run off straight into rivers and sounds, they can trigger algae blooms that deplete oxygen in the water, killing plants and fish. Dr. William Kirby Smith of Duke University's Marine Lab was here when they converted this to farmland at a time when regulations were loose and agriculture was exempt from drainage requirements. It was, you know, sort of like the Rachel Carson story that, uh, that there were all these effects people were talking about when nobody was listening. But Dr. Kirby Smith, along with the North Carolina Coastal Federation and other groups, have been working to restore wetlands. Now, when all that fertilizer and other pollutants flow into the wetlands first, the plants here trap it before it can pollute water downstream. Where we have freshwater wetlands and where it's the water control is is uh, complete. The water is, 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 is cleaned up almost back to natural. Fresh water flows in one direction from a river to the ocean. But this area is a saltwater marsh and here water flows both ways because of ocean tides. So controlling what flows into it is a lot harder and so is knowing exactly how well a salt marsh cleans up pollution. But if they can document that with hard science, it will help generate support for more projects like this. We're able to quantify that between 10 and 20 percent of the nitrogen that moves into this marsh is being retained. This marsh also gobbles up another environmental problem, methane, the most potent greenhouse gas of all. It means saltwater marshes could earn carbon credits. We would hope that it would be a large carbon sink. Uh, because that would mean maybe more restorations could be used in, in carbon trading. And not only do marshes clean water, they make a great home for lots of wildlife. Crabs, fish, birds, and oysters. And healthy oysters clean water too. See that spray of water? That's an oyster which has sucked up pollutants and bacteria and is spitting the water back out crystal clean. But when water quality in and around North River deteriorated, so did the oyster population and many harvesting areas were shut down. In 1999, the year that the North Carolina Coastal Federation started buying up land here at North River, the state environmental status report on oysters was dismal. Since then, teams of volunteers transform the farmland back into wetlands by digging trenches to rebuild creeks and planting scores of salt marsh grass and trees. To see the trees, you know, way over my head, um, it's, it's just a really good feeling to know that um, all of that, the runoff, is just being held here on the land. It's being slowed down and prevented from going out into our creeks and tributaries. The restoration project was designed by North Carolina State University's Biological and Agricultural Engineering Department. Graduate student Randall Etheridge developed a new way to monitor pollutants here in the salt marsh. He grew up on a farm and realized farming can impact water quality, something he's now trying to change. And I think with proper management, we can have both. We can have the good, good environmental um, protection and produce the food needed for, um, to feed the world. There's also a big education effort going on here. 
down closer to the estuary, what do you think it might be here? Students from NC State and Duke University's Marine Lab make regular visits here. And the Coastal Federation gives tours to other students and nearby residents, all designed to change their attitudes about wetlands. They still think that it's kind of a smelly swamp. But after learning for an hour or two about what a wetland does, how it helps to filter stormwater runoff, then they really understand why wetlands are so important, especially here along our coast. Wetlands are also great at flood control. But every year along the eastern seaboard, nearly 60,000 acres of coastal wetlands disappear. We'll never be able to restore all of the wetlands that we've lost. But the ones that we do restore, we need to make sure that we strategically do that so we can maximize those other types of ecosystem services to make sure that we can get the most bang for our restoration buck through the time. As the population grows along the coast, so does the potential for more pollution. So experts say it's more important than ever to show that swamps aren't dismal at all. But instead, living water treatment plants we all depend on. And we hope that little by little, with all of these projects that we're doing, that uh, the water quality of our coast is going to be improved and protected for many years to come.